Hello, this is Gary at Jack Raver Bushcraft. Uh, thank you for watching my video. Uh, this week I'm going to talk a little about sycamore. I'm quite fond of sycamore, although I uh, appreciate that many woodland um, owners are not as keen. Um, it does grow like bilio. I mean, it, it'll grow really quickly, but it also uh, puts up saplings really quickly. I think sometimes anyway, that that is a slightly unfair um, criticism. So if you take the view that all living organisms are here with a primary purpose of reproducing. It just seems a little bit churlish to get upset with something that is particularly good at it, such as sycamore. However, I do take the fact that um, it can be viewed as a, a nuisance species. I've read um, lots of different accounts around um, the origin of sycamore. The the wisdom seems to be around it not being a native species, but to the best of my understanding, no one, no one is quite sure when it did arrive um, and indeed who, who brought it. So one of the criticisms sometimes leveled against sycamore is um, how it doesn't harbor as diverse um, a, a, a number of species of invertebrates. Uh, so something like oak, for instance, has many, many, many more invertebrate species that will make um, make their home on on the oak. Sycamore, less um, less uh, numbers or less species of invertebrates that will make their home on the tree. With that said, in terms of the volume, the actual number of insects, whilst there are fewer species on sycamore, you, you end up with just as many of them. It is a um, acer, so we could just, we can look at the leaf there. It's that typical um, lobed leaf of a um, of a maple. Now, you will find sycamore in towns and cities, so it's not just one that grows in the uh, in the countryside. You'll find them in towns and cities. Just one kind of word of advice around that: don't park underneath the sycamore. So there's a, an aphid that will live on the underside of the, the leaf. Um, basically, it, it's, a, it's a tube. So it, it's taken in sap at one end. Um, it extracts the sugar and then basically poops the, the rest out um, at the other end. And so that sticky residue, if you get that on the paintwork of your car, it's an absolute nightmare um, to get off again. In terms of bushcraft, however, it is a, a useful species for us. So I can think of kind of two things um, off the top of my head where I, I would um, where bushcraft uh, where sycamore can come in useful for us. So I really like to use sycamore for carving. So it has a very nice straight grain, typically with few knots in it. Uh, it has a, a a nice kind of um, color going on, so a, a pale, creamy, whitey color going on in there. Um, it has antiseptic properties, so if you're carving something like a spatula or a spoon, that's going to be useful. It also resists staining to some extent. So that kind of thing where you make a, a, a bolognese and your spoon comes out um, slightly orangey, well, you're not going to get quite as much of that if you were to have carved it from sycamore. So I do like sycamore for carving. Uh, we can also use sycamore for um, bow drilling. So we could use the wood to make the hearthboard. We could use it to make a spindle. Where we've got these kinds of shoots, maybe a little bit thicker than this one, but potentially that could be used as the, the bow for a, a bow drill set as well. 
I hope that's something that is of use to you in your own bushcraft adventures. Uh, I'll try my best to get some more content out next week. Uh, you can subscribe either to our blog or to our YouTube channel. Both of them are Jack Raven Bushcraft. Until then, take care.